All right, so today I want to introduce you to the butterfly ball python. The butterfly is a pretty bright and flashy snake. It actually consists of three genes, the pastel, the fire, and the butter. And essentially what it is, it's actually a firefly with the addition of butter. The firefly is actually the pastel and the fire. And all those three genes working together makes for a really impressive combination. And if you work other genes into the mix, you can make some really flashy snakes. It's pretty awesome. And all those genes have been around for a really long time. So they're all relatively inexpensive. You can get into the butterfly project for a reasonable price. So today I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the potential of the butterfly ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna show you the three genes that make up the butterfly ball python. And the first one I wanna show you is the pastel. This is what one version of the pastel looks like. As a matter of fact, it really depends on which version of pastel you start with that really influences the final result as far as the appearance of your butterfly. I've seen some really bright butterflies and some that are not so bright. And I think it really comes down to which line of pastel you're using. Although a lot of people, essentially what they do is in a lot of cases, they just group all of the lines of pastel together, and we just say, this is a pastel. As a matter of fact, I have quite a few different pastels in my collection, and I produce different versions of pastel. Last year, I produced some really super bright pastels, which was pretty amazing, compared to some of my pastels from some of my other snakes. So it can be extremely variable based on what kind of which line of pastel you can get. And the other cool thing about pastel is it really reduces the pattern. Sometimes it reduces is it just a little bit to where it almost has like a normal looking pattern and I'd say this one is kind of an exception as far as being really bright and reducing the pattern more than most pastels and here is one other gene in the butterfly and that is the butter and I think they get the butterfly from the kind of the name from the butter combined with the firefly it's, it's a butter firefly combination I think that's where it comes from of course butter is in the mix and butter is essentially the same thing as lesser. Some people think they're exactly the same gene. Some people think they're different lines of the same gene. Some people think that the butters are a little bit brighter, but as far as what I've seen, I'd say in most cases, the butters and the lessers are pretty much almost exactly interchangeable as far as the appearance. Maybe there's a couple lines of butter that are a little bit brighter than some of the lessers I've seen, although I've seen some really bright lessers. And the butter's actually in the blue-eyed leucistic, which you know you also want to keep in mind if you're actually breeding a butterfly to something else in the blue-eyed leucistic complex so if you actually bred it to like a lesser or a mojave or a russo you'd end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes that would actually mask all the other genes in the combination so it's one of the challenges of actually working with the butterflies working with a gene in the blue-eyed leucistic complex and here is the last gene this is the last one in the butterfly the fire is is pretty awesome especially if you start mixing it with uh, especially like pastel and orange dream some of the real brightening genes and with lesser too it can have a really in a huge effect and lesser and butter are pretty much the same thing so if you actually the, the, the fire is a little bit tricky too because the fire is in the black eyed leucistic complex so if you actually bred a fire with something else that contains fire you would get an all white snake with black eyes which would also mask all of the gene. So when you're working with the butterfly, keep in mind you, you actually have a gene that's in the blue-eyed leucistic complex and the black-eyed leucistic complex, which makes it a little bit more of a challenge to actually breed it to anything else because a lot of times you may end up with an all-white snake and with all-white snake you don't really know what other genes are in the mix. So if you actually take all these genes together, the pastel, the fire, and the butter, mix them all together, this is what you get. You get the butterfly. Take a look at this beauty that is pretty impressive and I've actually seen some butterflies that are not quite as bright as this one I'd say this is probably one of the brightest ones I've seen over here on morph market as a matter of fact if you're kind of interested in what the price is for some of these this one is it's only $250 which isn't too bad for a three gene combo especially being you know as bright as it is and I'm thinking you know it's a hundred percent heck clown too so that probably brings up the price as well although even if it wasn't 100% head clown, I bet you could still get 250 for a really amazing snake like this.
So if you actually took a butterfly and you bred it to a pastel, so you would actually end up with two copies of pastel. This is what you would get. Take a look at this one. This is a butterfly with two copies of the pastel, also known as the superfly butter. As a matter of fact, a lot of these combinations, you actually have multiple names for the same snake. So it really depends on kind of the genes that are in the mix. So if you actually take a look at the genes on this one, this is uh, the super pastel, the butter, and the fire. So essentially the, the super pastel and the fire is also known as the super fly. So you could actually call this the super fly butter. So here's another gene that works really well with the butterfly. That is the Anchi. And a lot of times the Anchi, if you mix it in, especially with a lot of the bright, really flashy morphs that have a lot of the, you know, like the pastels and the orange dreams and the fires, the Anchi a lot of times it'll bring out a lot more color, sometimes really bright yellows or oranges, depending on what combo you actually mix it with. And the Anchi in a lot of times it'll actually reduce the pattern and it's kind of variable depending on the line of Anchi. It's kind of like almost as variable as pastel where you can have a lot of reduction in the pattern or sometimes just a little bit of reduction and sometimes the anchies can bring out more or less of the orange or yellow depending on the line of anchi and here's what happens if you work anchi into the butterfly <laughs> take a look at this i really love how it really keeps the really bright colors on a lot of these butterfly combos really impressive and someone was actually asking me hey what what genes actually keep their color and their brightness as they age and mature and that is a very good question. I haven't really gotten a good handle on which genes will actually stay really bright, but I've known, you know, especially if you actually were uh, pastel and fire together in a lot of combinations, a lot of times the fireflies really hold their brightness as they get older. And I know the desert ghosts, especially with the pastel desert ghosts, those also mature very well, but it's, it's kind of hard with a limited collection here. I produce, you know, I have maybe 60 breeder ball pythons here, so it's not like I have hundreds or thousands of ball pythons that I'm actually growing up and I can actually watch them progress and really kind of get an idea of you know how they hold their color it's kind of it's kind of difficult looking over here on morph market because sometimes you'll see hatchlings side by side with huge variations in the color and it's hard to actually compare one hatchling to another adult because you don't know if it has the same line of the same genes in the mix a lot of times it actually doesn't and you really can't figure it out just by looking over here on Morph Market if something's actually going to retain the color as it ages. So here is the spider ball python. The spider is actually one of the most visually impressive morphs. And when it comes to combos, I'd say spider works good with almost anything. You know, a lot of people kind of shy away from the spider because, you know, it tends to have a little bit of a head wobble or some neurological issues. But I'd say, you know, the spider is in the top 10 most popular ball python morphs in all of ball pythons. It's a really, it really adds to a lot of combinations as far as the pattern. And a lot of times it'll actually bring up a lot of white on the sides when you mix it into combos. So here's what happens if you mix spider into the butterfly. Take like this. I thought this was kind of unexpected that it really changes the spider. You can still see kind of the spider web pattern on top of the snake, but it pretty much wipes out all the spider look to it. It's pretty, it's a pretty unexpected and pretty amazing combination. As a matter of fact, if you actually work spider with a lot of different combinations, sometimes with the right gene you can actually mask the head wobble and especially if you mix it like with blackhead a lot of people say if you have a blackhead spider it completely masks all of the neurological issues of the spider and eliminates the head wobble and I've actually seen I think the same kind of an effect with my spider desert ghost combos which is kind of interesting it would be interesting to hear more reports as far as you know someone working spider into a lot of combinations and really completely eliminating the head wobble that would be a really interesting study. So here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon's actually a dark morph. If you actually breed two cinnamons together, you get uh, kind of a chocolatey brown patternless snake. The super cinnamon is pretty awesome. The cinnamon is actually a lelic with black pastel. So you can actually make a black snake that acts like a super when you're mixing cinnamon with black pastel. And here's what happens if you mix cinnamon in with the butterfly. Take a look at this. You get a pastel lithium fire, which is essentially a 
cinnamon butterfly and kind of the lithium these names can get a little bit confusing the the lithium is essentially uh, the cinnamon and the butter so this is actually the pastel lithium fire or you could call it the the cinnamon butterfly it gets a little bit confusing a lot of times it's easier if you actually just list out the genes then you know exactly what you're dealing with without all these confusing common names so here is the GHI. The GHI is another dark morph, and it's always interesting taking the dark genes and mixing them in with a really bright snake. Sometimes you can get really unexpected results with the darks and the lights. And you know, essentially a lot of people when they're working with GHI, they're trying to get a, like a jet black snake with really bright highlights through the snake. And you kind of like when you're working GHI into Mojave, it's kind of like the ultimate GHI combination. Here's what happens if you work GHI into to a butterfly take a look at this this is really interesting how you get this really blaze white stripe right down the top of the snake that is outlined in a really dark black and it really just lightens the entire color of the snake it's pretty amazing these genes working together as a matter of fact some of these it's pretty much you know I actually had to come over here to the world of ball pythons instead of morph market to actually find some of these snakes because you know some of these are really unusual sometimes it's like a world's first or maybe only one example of these genes mixed together so sometimes you know if you're actually kind of like plowing new ground you know breeding these snakes together sometimes you'll pop out something like this and you'll be scratching your head thinking what in the world is that combination and then when people produce it then you know kind of you kind of have a reference as far as what what you're breeding together and what you can actually produce so here is the leopard ball python. The leopard is one of my favorite combos. Essentially what it does is it really scrambles up the, the pattern of the snake. And a lot of times if you're actually working into other genes, it'll darken the snake. It's kind of a pseudo dark morph because if you actually work it into a lighter genes, like a lot of the really super bright genes, a lot of times it won't really darken it. But in this case, it'll darken it a little because of the butter. The butter has a little bit of dark to it, so the leopard actually darkens it a little more. So here's what happens if you work leopard into the butterfly take a look at this thing that is pretty crazy this is actually called the nuclear pastel leopard another slang name is the nuclear if you wonder what the nuclear is essentially what it is is it's the butter and the fire so essentially all these can actually be kind of shortened to nuclear combos because the butter and the fire are in all these combinations it gets a little bit confusing so this is actually this is actually the leopard butterfly or the nuclear pastel leopard pretty awesome combination so here's the last one I wanted to show you, and this is the clown. Of course, the clown is probably the king of combos when it comes to recessive mutations. And when you actually work the butterfly into the clown, you get a really bright snake. It's kind of amazing. Then the clown being recessive, it's a little bit more difficult to work with because you know we're starting with a three gene combo in the butterfly, and then we're adding two copies of the clown gene, which is essentially a five gene combination, kind of hard to hit. As a matter of fact, if you actually take a clown butterfly and you breed it to something else you can't reproduce it unless you're breeding to a visual clown or a head clown because you need the, at least one copy of clown in both parents to actually reproduce it and this is what happens if you are a clown into the butterfly take a look at this this is the butterfly clown pretty amazing combination you can see a lot of color really coming through and kind of the interesting thing is when you actually work pastel into the clown a lot of times it really fades out the clown and you lose some of the bright color but then when you work fire back into it the fire and the pastel are really bringing out a lot of the contrast and the butter too so the butter really brings out a lot of the color in a lot of these combinations and you, you can actually take you know the butter the pastel the fire and if you actually worked in other brightening genes like orange dream and the, you know some of the ones that really enhance the brightness you can make some really impressive combinations all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Tinny's Gaming asks, 
when do you start pairing up your male and female ball pythons? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I actually pair up on the same day every single year, and that is October 15th. I look at my calendar, if it's October 15th, you know, I already have all my breeding plans figured out. I have the males and the females. I make sure the females have the proper body condition, and then on the 15th, that's when I first put my first males in with the females. And keep in mind, you know, it actually takes a few months to breed ball pythons. Usually you put the male with the female and keep them in there for three to five days, and then you separate them for a couple of weeks and then feed them all, and then keep, you know, pretty much doing that over and over for usually three or four months until all your females are bred several times. And then once they lay eggs, usually in early spring, it's usually like in April where they lay eggs and usually, well, actually it's pretty much, you know, it kind of stretches out through the years. They, they start in April usually, and then it's April, May, and June usually when they lay eggs. And then it's a two month incubation period by the time those snakes actually hatch. And usually in the fall, it's like all the breeders have hatchlings in the fall. And that's kind of where I timed it, where I would actually have my hatchlings at the same time as all the other breeders. Although you can pretty much pair up your ball pythons any time of the year, there's a lot of breeders that are really super huge and they breed it, they pretty much breed year round. They have different snakes breeding at different times. And you can actually go to a lot of reptile shows in the spring and only the really big breeders that breed year round actually have a lot of hatchlings for sale in the spring. But I say in most cases, most people have hatchlings for sale, most of them in the fall. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.